Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I have a treat for you. I have two, count them two, videos on stamped watercolor from Art Impressions. I nearly combined the shops and the cabins from this new release into one video and it got too long so I'm splitting it in two and this one is the two cabins and as you can see Art Impressions no longer takes these out of the gray matting on the outside so you just pop those out they come out really easily and they do come with a plastic sheet so you can keep them attached to it. I'm going to be using my set of Tombow markers which are exclusively available at Ellen Hudson if you'd like to use the colors that I use. And I'm taking my Misty and removing the black pads so that I can use these stamps in it and get at least the building correct. So I'm gonna line it up and make sure I straighten the building out using the grid and then pop some marker on there. Just scribbling that on. A Couple different colors is totally fine. I experiment with which different color combinations are going to make a really nice looking building. And once you're done, you can see the image is partially there. Not all these images are fully there because you're supposed to put flowers into them. So I've pulled out my big container full of small flowers. I've combined these from all of my sets of Art Impression stamps. I like to keep all the small ones together so if I'm looking for something specific of a size, I can find it. And here I've put them all on some little blocks. Some of these are Art Impressions blocks and some of these are ones that I got a long, long time ago, many years ago, back in the day when they used to sell dollar stamps. Do you guys remember those? And I saved those and I'm glad I did because they work great for these little flowers. But Art Impressions also has a little set of five blocks that are on the small side. And those work really great for Art Impressions watercolor. So you can see here, I've got a couple of stamps, or a couple of stamps, couple of colors on the stamp so that as I add the water, different colors appear, which is so cool. This makes it actually look kind of vintage as well because you've got all these cool colors that mix together nicely. I'm putting water in all the areas except where the flowers are going to go because those are little window boxes and I've just painted them so that the flowers can then just sit on top. And I wanted to put clapboards on there. Clapboards, I don't know if, if I'm saying it right, clapboards is the way that I remember my grandma saying it. And it, basically it's white boards on the cabin. And all I'm doing is putting rivulets of water vertically so that I get those boards. You could also do them horizontally and it touches the ink on either side so you can end up with a little color traveling down but it's very pale, very light and isn't going to be a really strong element but gives a little bit of detail which is kind of cool. So get those all spread out around there. On the second cabin I'm going to show you some other tricks so stay tuned for the second stamp. And the flowers, by the way, there are none in this stamp set. They only give you the buildings in this. I've gotten all of my flowers from a bunch of different stamp sets. There's two of them that I'm going to link in the supply list down below and over on the blog that are my favorite two all flower sets. And there's one that's flowers, one that's grasses. And I always recommend you just get those to start with if you're new to Art Impressions watercolor you're going to need some flowers in general. There's a few sets that come with a couple flowers, but I like these particular sets because they have nice small ones, you know, little tight ones that you can use in circumstances like this. So I've put some more of the same colors that I used on the stamp, the ones that I made the building with, in order to create a roof color. And I'm just going to put in some blue, some brown, and some black and just let them mix on the roof. You can play around with it, dab a little of this, dab a little of that, but it's going to make the character of the color of the roof match the rest of the building if I use those same three colors. Look how nice that looks. Very cool. You can also do the building dark and the roof, the light color, 
lots of different ways you can approach this and every time you color the same stamp set it's going to look different and that is one of the most fun parts about art impressions watercolor if you're intrigued by this and you're interested in learning a lot more i do have a stamped watercolor jumpstart class which is just kind of from the get-go from the beginning lots of different fun techniques and ideas on how to use art impressions watercolor there are some stamps recommended in there, but you can use all different kinds of Art Impressions watercolor to achieve great results in the class. You just need some flowers and then the rest of the supply list are in the, uh, it's all in the classroom for you. So I'm stamping some flowers into the window boxes and you can stamp some greens in there. And I've got a little bit of stamped greens but not very much, there's not much room there. So I've only put a little bit of color on the edge of this stamp that I'm using for the grasses and for the greens so that I only get a little line of green across there that I'll have to use my water to spread it around. You can stamp them in or you can draw them in or you can paint them in, whatever way works for you, totally fine. And add some water onto the flowers and onto the greens so that I start making little little mini gardens in each one of the flower boxes and uh, spreading that color around. And on each one of these, I'm going to be using a, a little different scenery for them to give you some ideas on how you can create your own scenes. And in the stamped watercolor class and the there's an intermediate as well as the beginner one, I show you lots of techniques for creating trees and creating backgrounds and that kind of thing. Really fun class. The people who have taken it seem to be having a blast with the class. So I'm spreading out the greens for the grass down there at the bottom. And to make some trees, I'm just using some sticky notes to mask out some areas so that I can stamp the green above there. And you don't, you can use flowers up there. You can use any kind of stamp to make just clouds of trees basically by stamping those into the open area and then spreading it out with your watercolor. So here I've got one that's sort of a vine looking stamp, but it's going to work as a tree because when I start spreading the color out with the water, it's going to, you'll see, turn into a very nice clump of trees looks a little funky for the moment, but just add water. This sounds like one of those, those ads. Remember those uh, sea monsters? They were like little, a little package of things that you would put into water and it would turn into little creatures. It, and it, it said, just add water onto it. <laughs> and I always thought that was such magic. And then I realized you could do that with stamping and art things just add water and magic happens. And that's what happens here. So I've got the start of some trees and you could leave them very soft and loose like this. I have one kind of green on one side and a different green on the other. But while it's wet, I'm stamping a little bit of extra of the, the little vine stamp onto the, the wet areas as well as off of them so that the stamp goes out past them. And I get these really interesting edges where I, I have some that are dry because they're stamped onto the dry area and some that are stamped into the wet. And it just gives the trees a lot more dimension overall. So I added a stamped sentiment onto it and some layers of cardstock and my little, my little cabin is all ready. Next up is the other cabin. And for this one, I thought it would be helpful potentially to show you the side view. So you can see how much water that I'm using as I fill in each one of these areas. Depending on the markers you're using, you may want to use more or less water. And what I recommend is testing out your markers and seeing how they work. Because if your markers are really juicy, they're going to act differently than if they're kind of dry. Different brands will also act different ways. I use these Tombos because I like the effects I get the most. But if you have zigs or you have clean color markers or the twin tip or all different kinds, 
You can use others, just practice with them, stamp something a whole bunch of times and try it with different amounts of water and see which one you like the best. And that will give you an idea of how to proceed with your, your stamping and your watercoloring. This one, I decided to do what they did on the packaging. And I love that Art Impressions always gives you a color image on the front of the package. They painted the roof this beautiful bright green. I have never made a green roof. I always make these very natural looking brown and red and black roofs. And the green was just so much fun that I thought, yeah, I'm going to try that. And so I did. Started out with a light green, added a little more dark green at the top just to add a little bit of dimension to it so it has some different color in it, not just one solid color. And then started again stamping the flowers into the window boxes. And depending on how you you want to do it, you can add some water into the area where the flowers are going to go. Or you can stamp them like I'm doing on dry paper and then add them in. You can also paint in your greens or you can draw them in with a marker. You can just draw little lines in there and then add water to it. Lots and lots of different ways that you can use these stamps to create a lot of different looks. And until you try all the different ways, you won't know which one you like the best. So it's kind of helpful to just play around with them. And that's why I say stamp the image a whole bunch of times and see how it comes out. So now I've got some of the red and the purplish color and I'm going to add even more flowers into here. I wanted more intense color on my flowers than I got from the stamping. Sometimes the stamping just gives you a little weak color depending on how well it's stamped, etc. And you can just paint more in, which is kind of nice. Adding a little bit of green to the bottom. And this is actually the same stamp that I used for the trees in the last one. So just add some water to it and it will look like either trees or grasses, depending on whether you're putting it high up in the air or down low at the bottom. And I have painted a bunch of water onto the sky in a relatively uneven fashion and painting a little bit more on there, as you can see, and then dropping some of the blue color into it. And that's going to give me a soft sky. If you just paint the blue in there, you're going to get hard edges. But if you want the soft edges, then paint a bunch of water and drop the color into that. And you're more likely to get a soft look for the edges of your clouds and a little more romantic soft look. To finish this one up, I add a little bit of color into the door and doing my normal uh, overachieving or I wanted to add in a little more shadow colors in some areas where by the time you add in other colors things start to look a little weaker. They may have looked really strong when you first started out but when contrast happens everything else starts to look lighter so you may find it'll be helpful to go back in and add a little bit more color here and there to give yourself a little bit more contrast. So there is my sweet little cabin. I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you check out the other video today too. And all the supplies are linked in the doobly-doo as well as class information if you're interested in taking stamped watercolor classes. And I will see you again very soon with more videos. Take care. Thanks for watching. And thanks for giving me a thumbs up. See you later. Bye.